Um, but today, I wanted to talk about um, an unconscious excuse that I see people using to fail. And I thought maybe you might find it helpful. It's one of those excuses that we see other people, like it's easy for us to see other people using it. It's harder to observe in ourselves. Um, the easiest way for me to explain it is to use teenagers, because we see it in teenagers a lot. Um, especially if you have um, children who are told, you can do anything you want, you're so smart, you're so bright, like they're given, and you know, parents think that they're being supportive. So they tell the kids, you can do anything you want. Well, when the child becomes a teenager and realizes they may not succeed at everything, they may fail at some things, they feel like they um, have this obligation to their parents to always succeed. And so what they end up doing is not trying because that way they don't have to fail. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I used to call it the pressure to be mediocre. And what that means is you don't get picked on or teased or whatever if you do something and you succeed at it, even if it's an easy thing. If you just do whatever mediocre is, whatever simple, um, you don't get teased about that. But if you stretch and you try to do something that's you know outside your comfort zone, that's more challenging, and you fail, then people give you a hard time about it. And so we end up with this um, attitude in our society of being mediocre because it's safe. And I see that with people when they start talking about trying to change their diet or changing their health or changing their lifestyle, is they start looking for reasons why they're gonna fail. So for example, they say things like, oh, I really miss X, Y, Z thing. Mm -hmm. I or, can't, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't live without. Right, <coughs> exactly. Or, um, you know, this is really hard for me. Or even like the old, I'm addicted to. Right, that's yeah. another one that yeah. people use. And so we see people where they start, they're not talking about failing, but they're talking about how hard the change is, and it gives them an excuse to fall back on. And so that that's kind of the unconscious excuse that people use to fail, is they make up stuff that's hard, or why they can't do it, or why it doesn't work, and they talk about that, and then it tells their unconscious brain, oh, we can't do this, and then they fail, and then it's like, okay, I failed, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. And as you know, the more you tell yourself you can't do something, guess what, you're not gonna be able to do it. I mean, you're, you're you're already setting yourself up to fail, so you're only gonna have one conclusion. Right, and so what I would encourage you to do instead, the flip side of that is, look for reasons where you're succeeding. Recognize the success moments. You know, if, if you're trying to intermittent fast, maybe you made it 15 hours, mm -hmm. and that you know is three hours more than you made it before. That's phenomenal. That's right. You know, be proud of yourself for that. No, maybe you didn't make it the 18 you had planned to, but that's okay, that's not failure, that's just next time you try. And so what I encourage people to do, and we talk about this in the Whole Food Muscle Club, when, um, um, sometimes on the Q&As, when people ask, talk about the things where you are succeeding, because that tells your unconscious, hey, we're succeeding, we're making progress, as opposed to talking about the places you aren't succeeding, or the things that aren't working, or the things that are hard, or um, you know, talking about why this won't work for you, because I see that a lot. And I guess it's a, um, I'm not going to use the word psychology because that's just ridiculous for me to say, <laughs> but, it, but it's, a, it's your mind state, right? It's, instead of thinking about um, failure, think about successes, you know? The little things are successes. We celebrate little successes all the time, you know? I mean, as much as eating oatmeal every day, it's a high five, high five. Oh, it's a high five, okay, high yeah. five for eating oatmeal. I mean, so it's just, a, it's just these little things that are making you successful. Don't look at the things that are making you unsuccessful. And, you know, look at how you, how you think about change. Um, you know, if you, so one of the things they tell, they tell us, uh, you've probably heard, is if when you set a goal, tell other people, because then they'll hold you accountable. The unfortunate thing with that is when you tell other people, you're more likely to tell other people a tiny goal that you can actually, that you're positive you can reach, as opposed to a stretch goal, because if you tell them a stretch goal and you don't reach it, there are always people who want to tease you and yeah. give you a hard time. Even as adults, right. we get that. And, and that, that's a sad thing, because it is true. People, people are on the edge of their seat waiting for you to fail. It's unfortunate. So they can jump on your Right, it's it. unfortunate, yep. but it's true. Um, so fine, but as we've said before, so the key to that, of course, is by finding a um, success person or a success group, a place where you can actually um, tell about your successes, tell about your goals, and you're going to be encouraged, not um, discouraged. And something like, like our Whole Food Muscle Club, that's what we do. We encourage people. We don't... We don't, we're not the ones that sit there and say, oh, you said you were going to do this and you didn't. Why not? You know, like that. We're like, well, what did you do? And, you know, that's fantastic. And so what can we do next time? You know, 
to increase it. The thing, and the thing that's also interesting about it is that, the, hey, Valerie, what do you say? It's not the message the world gives you. Yeah, exactly. Mm, exactly right. Um, the, more, the more people see you as a success, the more people see you as someone who achieves things, the more likely they are to try and tear you down and beat you up when you don't succeed. I had an interesting thing happen at a um, networking event last week. Um, they had the door prizes things, and I won one of the door prizes, and what I won was a bottle of wine. And when I got up there, the guy actually went to hand it to me and then took it away and was like, wait, you don't drink wine. And I was like, First of all, you don't know me that well. You have no idea. But in front of everybody, he was like trying to tear me down that I, w I won a bottle of wine and that you know I was lush and blah, blah, whatever. And it's interesting that someone in my position, you know, health and wellness coach, do the work that I do, um, succeed that the way that we do, that he would choose that moment to um, kind of shame me in front of everyone. And that is so normal when people know your goals if they see a way a chink in your armor they want to be able to shame you mm -hmm. and so that's something i would encourage you to be aware of is are you holding yourself back from those big goals because of the way our society likes to tear people down who are trying to achieve something and especially if you if you slip, have a slip up or it's harder than you thought it would be or you're not achieving what you hoped you would achieve people love to jump on that mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to kind of look at that. Are you setting your goals at the yes, I can absolutely do it, as opposed to making yourself reach for those things that you can do, but they're going to be a little more. I've always been a reacher. I mean, that's because you yeah. couldn't care less what people. Think. And that's that's <laughs> yes, that's a fortunate thing for me. But I mean, I've had plenty of people try to tear me down throughout. I mean, I went I went back to college late and got my degree and. Through that whole path, it was like, why are you bothering, you know? You'll never finish. You know, I mean, yeah. when I wanted to be a bodybuilder, I, you know, yeah, right, right, right. And then I was a bodybuilder, you know. I mean, it's just, you know, the way I eat. I mean, I've been doing, eating well, at least, you know, much better now than what I thought was well back then. Uh, but I've been doing it for most of my life, 40 years, 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just I set high goals and then I try to go get them. But isn't it funny how even people like us who do typically achieve our goals, people still want to tear us down. Because they want you to be like that. Yeah. That's, it's, that's the it's, it's an unfortunate thing, but that that's the unconscious thing that we get taught by society about um, achievement is that you're going to fail. So you may as well have you know a, a safety net, to, an excuse as to why you failed. And I would encourage you to, to look at those excuses that you're using because not only is it for society, but your unconscious then believes it. And you're like, well, yeah, I gave it a go and it didn't work for me. And it, it just gets really easy. And, the, and on that point, so, I mean, just to use an example, say your goal was to be, you know, 90% um, whole food, you know, the plants, eating plants um, with a whole food muscle weight. And then what happened is you got to 80%. Well, that's not a failure. That's a, that's a huge success. Mm -hmm. You know, so look at it that way. If you're now eating, and a lot of people do, you know, 70% of your meals are animal-based. And you, you swap that around. You swap that around or, or make it 50-50. Any move you're making in, into a whole food, you know, whole food muscle style of eating is going to be a success. It's not a failure. Yeah, absolutely. But that's what I wanted to talk about today was kind of the psychology of, of making excuses, even unconscious excuses to fail. I think that's an important thing to know. If you want to join the Whole Food Muscle Club, I did put the website up there where you can just click up there on um, rnrjourney.com slash join. That'll take you directly to the join page where you'll see all the benefits you get and, and be able to join us there. We're happy to support you and not give you excuses to fail and you know celebrate all of your successes. I made the point in the book that we're kind of like a sports coach. We believe in you and we love you and you want we want you to succeed and we're going to celebrate every single success that you have. We're also going to give you a kick in the pants when you need one because <laughs> that's but a nice kick in the pants. That's kind of who we are, what right. we do. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I think that's it for today. Okay. Make sure that you like and share. Let other people know about us. Um, we can't make a difference if, if people don't know that we're here, you know, talking about this stuff every day. So please do like and share. Thank you for those of you who are here and making comments. We really appreciate that. Um, and our website again is rnrjourney.com. And you can go to rnrjourney.com slash join to join the Whole Food Muscle Club. Correct. I think that's it. I think that's it for today. So with that, we'll say nice blues. It is blue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, Have guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.